This is a raspberry pie. It's a dessert that's eaten all over the world and contains ingredients such as raspberries and sugar and... What? Not this kind of raspberry pie. Oh, the little computers. Oh, that makes more sense, doesn't it? Oh, I'm going to have to rethink my whole video now. I just made a raspberry pie for nothing. Hi everybody, welcome back, or welcome to my channel, where in today's video we're going back to basics and I'm going to go over what exactly is a raspberry pie. And no, of course, not this kind of raspberry pie, but this kind of raspberry pie. If you've heard of them before and maybe you're a bit lost and not sure where to start or maybe you've never even heard of them before, then keep on watching. I can't believe I made a whole raspberry pie for that. Sorry. I tried to put the raspberry pie logo on it. I just like to quell the rumours that I will be on Bake Off this year. I'm afraid not. So, as you know, this is a raspberry pie. It's a tiny credit card sized microcomputer that might look small and unassuming, but can actually do absolutely everything that your normal laptop or desktop computer could do. Now, Raspberry Pis are designed to be small, compact, portable, and most importantly, affordable. This model here, which is the Raspberry Pi 2 B+, ranges for about £30, and so do most of the other ones. I'm pretty sure the most expensive kit you can get, which is an all-in-one computer and keyboard, is around £99. The reason they're so affordable is because the Raspberry Pi Foundation aims to make computing accessible for everybody of all ages. It's an absolutely fantastic resource for learning to program on, which is how I got involved in Raspberry Pis. I coded my first line of Python on one of these and just fell in love there and then. Because Raspberry Pis have the ability to communicate and interact with the outside world and other devices, it makes it absolutely perfect for digital makers. The thing that Raspberry Pis do that I love the most is really highlights the creative aspect of technology. I feel like technology can sometimes seem like a very rigid and maths-based and nerdy subject, but actually the Raspberry Pi proves that there's such a great deal of creativity involved in technology and as you can tell by my channel that is what I absolutely love to do. Now that I've gone over the background of the Raspberry Pi let's take a closer look at the actual physical Pi itself. As you can see we are now up close and personal with my Raspberry Pi. Like I said although it's small there's a lot of things here that you will hopefully recognize from your laptop or desktop computer. We'll start with these two here. They are the USB ports. As you can see there's two in each one, and these are used for connecting your mouse, keyboard, or anything else that connects via USB. Next to it, down here, you have the Ethernet port, and this is used for connecting your Ethernet cable from your router to your Raspberry Pi to supply it with internet. Now, some Raspberry Pi models come with Wi-Fi built in, so you don't need to do that. Others don't, so you will have to connect it via Ethernet like this one, or you can get little USB Wi-Fi adapters that you just plug in here and that will let you connect to the internet. This is the audio jack, so that's for plugging in speakers or headphones. And here we have the HDMI port and that is for plugging in your screen so that you can interact with your Raspberry Pi. As I very briefly mentioned in my previous video, you don't always need a screen to interact with your Raspberry Pi because you can set up to connect to it by a remote desktop connection on your own laptop or computer. This little micro USB port here is for supplying power to the Raspberry Pi. Underneath here, this little slot at the back is where you insert your SD card, which is going to contain the operating system for your Raspberry Pi, as well as any other things you stored on it. Now, this little connector here in between the HDMI and the audio jack is for connecting cameras to your Raspberry Pi. What you do is you flick this white bit up and you insert a ribbon cable for connecting them. And finally, arguably one of the more important things about the Raspberry Pi is these pins up here. These are called GPIO pins or general purpose input and output pins. This is where you're going to connect any electronic components and all your other cool accessories that's really going to take your Raspberry Pi to the next level. And that was just a very brief overview of 
what a Raspberry Pi is. So if you didn't know, then hopefully that's given you some good background and maybe even given you a little bit of inspiration as to what you could use a Raspberry Pi for. I'll make sure to link some good resources down in the description if you're ready to dive a little bit deeper. I know that was a bit of a short video, but this video is part of a Raspberry Pi beginner series I'm planning here on my channel. So if there's anything in the basics of Raspberry Pis that you would like me to cover, then please do let me know down in the comments. As much as this channel I'd like to be all about making fun and cool projects for Raspberry Pi, I also want it to be beneficial to you guys. So if there's anything you would like me to cover, then please let me know so that I can make sure that I'm making the content that you want to see. Speaking of fun projects, I actually have some really cool things going on behind the scenes right now that you will see in the upcoming weeks. If you want a little sneak peek, then be sure to follow me over on Instagram, which is just at Elora J. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you won't miss some of the cool projects that I have coming up. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye! Now the question is, does this actually taste any good? It's sharp, but not, not that bad.